welcome back. So we're going to keep plugging away with a couple of the basics of C. Uh, so every language has kind of the same concepts. You've seen them before, uh, but they've got control structures. The basic control structures include um, like if statements, for statements, while statements, uh, things like this. We're going to go over a couple of them. In this video, we're going to do um, if statements and switch statements. You may not have seen switch statements before. Uh, but the concepts are all the same. It's the syntax that you're learning because you don't know C, or at least you haven't been taught C and the things that we've forced you to take to get into this class. Uh, so we're just going to kind of teach you a couple of the syntax. So the basic syntax of an if statement, um, it's easier just to kind of look at an example. Uh, you say if, um, and then you have something that's surrounded by parentheses and that's your conditional. Uh, you can see that most um, the most common if statement is equals equals, uh, so that's the equals operator and not the assignment operator. Um, if Bob is in fact equal to 12, uh, then you run this block of code. You can see that what's right here, if your eyes are really good, it is actually a curly brace um, and not a parenthesis, so that's important there. So if Bob is 12, it's going to run this chunk of code. Um, if, however, Bob is some other number, I mean 3, 4, whatever, not 12, um, you're going to run the block uh, that's in the else statement. Again, this has an opening curly brace um, and a closing curly brace. This matching up of the curly braces is important. Um, there are different ways that you can choose to, to write them. Um, for, for new programmers, I recommend that you just kind of put them um, all on appropriate tabs. Um, so if you tab things correctly, uh, you can typically see if they're there. Other people, like I've been programming a long time, I might put my opening curly brace on the same line as the if. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, but that's a basic if statement. That's what the syntax looks like. Uh, let's just kind of look out for a couple common errors. Um, so first, we've got an if statement here. Um, oh, and I meant to say that this is actually legal. Um, so if you have one line exactly, no more, no less, um, then the curly braces are optional. Um, so you could, you know, if you wanted, you know, so whatever your condition is, even for one line, put an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace, and that's fine. Um, but you don't have to. So you could, if you wanted, um, if it's one line, omit the curly braces. That can lead to, to trouble. Um, but the statement that's there is totally fine. If Bob is 10, then Dave will get set to 5. Um, the number one thing, like, and I left you a spot to where you can fill in your notes on this, the number one thing that people do most common is this. This is terrible. Um, and the problem is simple. Um, you put in a single equals. Oh! Single equals, what it does is it assigns 10 to Bob. Um, and then whatever got assigned also gets returned. Um, so 10 gets returned, and 10 is considered true. Anything non-zero is true. So if you run this, then every single time, Bob is going to get set to 10, which is probably not your goal at all, and Dave is going to always get set to 5. Um, so I know it, it seems like such a small thing to put a single equals there instead of a double. Uh, but man, if you put a single there, totally changes everything. Um, so that's the most common error. So I wanted to throw that one out there first. Um, other little common errors. Um, this one sometimes gets people. Um, the rest of the, uh, the block, like the curly braces, is considered kind of like part of the for statement. So you do not put a semicolon there. Uh, that is bad. Um, technically what it does is it says if Bob is 10, then run um, whatever is in there, uh, which is nothing. Um, and so it says, if Bob is 10, then do nothing. So this if statement is pointless, because it, if it's true, it does nothing. If it's false, it does nothing. And this should not even be tabbed over. Um, this is not even part of the if statement. It should just you know, set Bob or Dave to 5. Um, so that semicolon uh, gets people sometimes. That's bad. Do not put semicolons. Um, the other thing that gets people is this one is fine. Um, you know, it's got multiple lines, no big deal. Um, but sometimes people use that single line trick, like they say, oh, I don't have to put, uh, I don't have to put curly braces on. I know I'm just going to have one line. And then a few days go by and they add a second line. Um, that second line is not part of the if statement at all. In fact, it should not even be tabbed over. 
Um, so if, if Bob was 11, then Dave would get set to five and Port B would get set to three. But if Bob was, I don't know, 50, then you know Dave would not run, but this one would still run uh, because it's not part of the, the if statement. Um, to be honest, what uh, most companies do is they just require curly braces, right? So even if it's a single line, doesn't matter. Always put the curly braces. Um, it's much safer just to always put them. Um, I cheat sometimes, but I try not to cheat. Um, I try to always put my curly braces um, as long as I remember. So I always learn things best by doing. Uh, so what I want you to do is I want you to um, go into MP Lab. Um, you've hopefully already set up the uh, the project from the last video lecture. If not, you can set up a new one. It's easy. Um, create a variable uh, called age, uh, set its value to 10, and then make an else if statement uh, that does one of two things. It either prints out that it's greater than 15 um, or less than 15. Um, and I also would like you to print the value using a percent %d. Um, if you can't remember how the syntax works on this, it's kind of uh, print f, um, and then you'll have you know this thing here. Um, and then you'll have a comma, and then you'll say age, uh, and then you'll have a semicolon. Um, so that's what it looks like. And then whatever age is will get put in uh, to, the, to the percent %d. Uh, so take a minute if you can do that. Uh, after you run it with 10, try it again with 20. Uh, make sure it all works. All right, I'll go and work it as well. All right, so I went ahead and got mine typed up. Uh, so what I typed was I typed, um, well, first off, I commented out uh, the earlier stuff because I knew I didn't need it. Um, and so I typed just the first thing in this function, age is 10. So you can see it's first, now comments don't count. Um, so I've got age is 10, um, and then I said if age is greater than 15, so that's easy, uh, then I print out, you know, age is greater than 15. Um, and then I chose to just use an else statement uh, for the less than or equal to. There's no reason to write a condition there because I know if the first one didn't hit, then the second one must. Um, so if I run this uh, and see if I did good, I actually kind of like to make some errors sometimes um, just because then I learn from the mistakes. Um, so there we can see the age is 10, uh, which is less than or equal to 15. If I stop the program and then I change it to 20, um, and I'm going to go ahead and clear, I'm going to right click and hit clear, um, and then I rerun it. This time it should say um, that it is um, greater than 15, so that's good. Um, so you can see that this is a basic if statement. Um, I accept that you understand if statements, um, but now you understand the syntax in C, which is really what we're after. Uh, let's go ahead and look at a couple other things while we've got you here on conditionals. Um, the next one is uh, multiple conditions. Uh, so you can actually have multiple things uh, that are used to make something true. Um, so here we've got if Bob is equal to 11 um, and ands, note that there are two ands, we'll talk about that more in the operators, um, and x is equal to 3, if they're both true, uh, then this will happen. I do want to warn you about one gotcha. Um, and that's that's this one here. It's kind of funny. Um, so two less than x less than six. You've you've been in enough math classes to know that in math class um, this is fine, right? So no big deal there. Uh, but however, this is a programming class, um, and in programming class um, this is bad. Um, let's look at what would happen. So th it's easy to see if you make fifty, right? So if x was fifty. Um, you can tell that whoever wrote this uh, wants it to be false because it's not in that range. But what really happens, um, so you essentially have this, and the way a computer executes it is it looks at this operation first. It says is 2 less than 50, um, and that's true. Turns out uh, true is 1. Um, all right, and then it does the next thing, and it says is 1 less than 6. Oh, that's true too, so it's a 1. Um, so in the end, this thing is true, right? Even for 50. Turns out it's true for anything greater than 2. Um, so just kind of warning you, that's bad. Um, if you wanted to do that, um, so if you wanted to actually make that work, you would have to do it in two steps, right? So you'd have to say, um, is x bigger than 2 and and is x less than 6? 
Um, so the fix is quite easy. I just wanted to warn you uh, that that little math shorthand thing is not valid uh, code. There's also an idea of else if. Uh, with else if, what you can do is you can say, if Bob is tw 12, uh, run this block, right? If Bob is not 12, then look at the next possibility. Is Bob 13? Um, if he's 13, uh, run this block. If he's not 12 and he's not 13, um, then here's an else statement that catches it. The nice thing about else ifs is that only one chunk will run, right? So you're guaranteed that only one of them will run. If you make it such that, um, you know, like, is it less than 100? Um, and then you said, is it less than 50? Um, so like, let's say this was less than 100, uh, and then this was less than 50, and then this was less than 25. Um, that would be pointless because it would hit the first one and say, yep, it's less than 100. Um, and it would run that code, and then after it finished it, it would skip uh, to the end, right? Like it would skip, it would not run the others, um, even if they were also true. So it, it finds the first match, runs it, and then gets out. Now what you can do, uh, which is a nice trick, is you can say, is it greater than 100? Is it greater than 50? Is it greater than 25? And so here, if it's like, let's say it's 30, um, it'll look at the first one and say, nope. Um, and it'll say nope, um, and then it'll run there. The nice thing is, is that third one didn't have to check if it was less than 50. You knew it was less than 50 just by getting there. Um, so if you know how it works, you can use that trick to your advantage. Uh, but it finds the first match and runs it. Um, another statement, just because I wanted to mention it, is the switch statement. Uh, the switch statement is exactly like an else if. Um, except for it uses very, very different syntax. To be perfectly honest, I'm not sure how I feel about um, a different way to do the exact same thing. Like, it's kind of bad. But to be honest, the syntax, it kind of looks cleaner to me. Like, it makes it very clear uh, where the blocks are. So it's a nice, clean-looking syntax. What it is, is um, it's, so you write the word switch. You have an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And then you say, uh, we're going to switch based on what Bob is. If Bob is three, um, run this code. If Bob is four, uh, run this code. If Bob is five, uh, run this code. So you can see it's the same as an else if. Um, it's just very different syntax. And the syntax on this, just in case you have trouble seeing it, um, it's a colon, not a semicolon right there. So it's a colon which is crazy, right? It's like, who uses colons? And the word case, um, that's just how it works. And then at the end of each one, there's no curly brace, there's the word break. And if you leave off the word break, like if you forget it, um, it will just keep running code until it finds the word break, uh, which is crazy. It's called fall through. Sometimes you have intentional fall through, but that's rare. Um, so it's a shorthand way of doing things. It does have the limitation of it can only use the equals equals operator. So it has to be an exact match of three, four, or five. Um, there's no less thans or anything like that. So it's, it's actually like more limited than the else if, because the else if can use less thans and things like that. Um, there's no multiple conditions. So it's a very simple solution to a very simple problem. If Bob is not three, he's not four, he's not five, um, there's a catch all at the end called default. Um, again, with this colon, um, and if it's none of the above, then it hits default. To be honest, you don't ever have to type a switch statement. If you don't want, you, you never have to type one. Um, but I'll use them in my code, um, so you better understand them. Um, otherwise, you're going to say, what is this crazy thing? Um, but I use them sometimes, uh, but you never have to if you don't want. Uh, so that's a switch statement. Uh, we could do some practice with them, but I mean, I think you get the concept just by looking at it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and cut it off here. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll bring you back next time to learn a little bit more about loops. See you then.